Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I like to take the time to talk about my personal drumhead preferences. I've been asked a couple of times actually over the past few weeks which drumheads I use here on the channel or in general. So I thought I'd discuss that today with you and tell you exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. First of all, important thing to know, drum heads are very, very, very important. The tuning and your drum head, which, you know, goes hand in hand, makes up about 70% of your sound. And then actually the next thing, the rim, is again very important. So head and tuning, the hoop, and then the shell. I've experienced so many people, you know, if I'm if I'm rehearsing somewhere or even in recording studios, you know, you get there and, and they are like, yeah, I have a great drum set. The drum set is really great. I have a very expensive drum set. What do you say? Check it out. And then they have like maybe a, 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 a 5,000 Euro DW collectors or some very rare, you know, uh, Rogers vintage kit, amazing drum kit with, you know, 20, 30 years old drum heads on it, you know, dented and, and you know, with maybe even holes in it and, you know, completely bad shape. And they just don't get that, you know, this is uh, completely destroying the whole sound. I mean, you can have the best drum set out there. If you're using bad or old or, you know, defective drum heads, it will sound like crap. Uh. And on the other hand, if you, you know, have very good new drum heads and you tune them very well on a, you know, cheaper drum set, you can already have a, a good sound and a, a way, way better sound than 20 year old heads on some 10,000 euro drum set. But now let's really uh, discuss this uh, topic now, which drum heads I use and why I use them. To cut it short, I use the exact same drum head on every, you know, surface that I'm playing on and also every reso head surface, with the exception of, you know, using an actual snare side reso head on the, the snare side. And um, the reso head of my bass drums is also this uh, kind of special power stroke with the smaller dampening ring that um, the high quality Yamaha bass drums come with. But other than that, so meaning better side of snare, all my toms and kick drums, and also reso side of all my toms, I use the exact same drum head, being a Remo Ambassador drum head. First of all, I love Remo drum heads. Other companies are fine as well, but Remo is what I have been playing pretty much my entire life. I'm so used to that sound and, and I so love and like that sound that every other drum head sounds kind of weird to me. I love Remo, I endorse them. In my opinion, best heads out there. The Ambassador drum head is as simple as it gets, you know, a normal single ply 10 mil, completely undampened, unmuffled drum head. And every company makes this kind of head. With Evans, it's called the, the G1, and of course, Aquarian and all the other companies make them too. And as you've already seen here, I use that head, the Remo Ambassador, in two different finishes, being clear and coated. There are also other finishes as well, as for example, with Remo, the fiber skin finish and so on. But you know, clear and coated is are the most basic ones. So clear has absolutely nothing on it. Coated has this sprayed white plastic mylar uh, coating on it. And I've always been using, always, 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 my whole life, clear ambassadors as the reso heads on my toms. I tried out coated uh, ambassador reso heads 
uh, for a very short afternoon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for a low, thuddy, more vintage kind of tuning or sound. I'm sure they're great, but you know, I'm going for a little bit of a higher, more overtone, more ringy sound. That's what I like these days. And therefore, with, you know, a coated better and reso head, the drum was like already too choked or too kind of like pre-dampened already, but too much. I, I, I liked it much better with the coated head on top and then the normal clear on bottom. So again, that's what I'm used to. That's what I'm going for. So clear ambassadors as the reso heads on all of my toms always. But actually for the, the better sides, I'm more used to using coated heads. Right now, as you saw, I'm experimenting with, you know, clear heads on the, the better side of my toms, as well as the kick drum, because, you know, changing to a double ply head or a pre-muffled head or something is a very big change and a very big step. But, you know, switching between clear and coated within the same drum head is really a nice change because it's not that much of a change. It's the same feel, I like maybe even identical feel and almost the same sound, but you know, with a slightly different frequency spectrum and a slightly different tone. So it's a, it's a nice mix up to go back between clear and coated. And I've, I've been really enjoying those clear ambassadors right now. I mean, the coded will probably stay my you know, number one preference. They do sound a little bit warmer, jazzier maybe, and I'm really used to that sound and I really like them. And you can play brushes on them, which uh, you really can't play on a clear head. That's maybe the biggest difference of all. Remo Coded Ambassador is the only head I ever put on my snare drum with the exception of maybe one or two times where I tried something different that, you know, I just ended, you know, tearing off after a couple of minutes. I, I don't know, the Remo Coded Ambassador on the snare, that's, that's just how a snare uh, is supposed to sound like for me. Again, the snare side is an ambassador snare side head, so it's it's too an ambassador head, but it's, you know, much thinner. I, again, play ambassador heads on my bass drum too. I mean, I used to, as most guys, I started out with you know, the classic Power Stroke 3. Most people out there don't know a Power Stroke 3 head, which is like the most common bass drum head, is nothing more than an ambassador with an already integrated, you know, dampening muffling system, but it is still a single ply 10 mil drum head. But with the dampening ring and also those two, you know, ink rings that add some more dampening. But other than that, other, you know, if you, if you would remove all the dampening, you would, you know, end up with an ambassador head. It is not a two ply head. It is not a thick head. It is a normal 10 mil single ply head with dampening. So you can actually get the exact same bass drum sound when you use an ambassador and then you dampen it yourself. You know, you add more muffling inside the bass drum or, you know, you, you, uh, gaff, you use gaff tape or stick something on there. You can muffle it, but you can also have the unmuffled and open sound. And that's, you know, the, one of the biggest advantages uh, when using, you know, ambassador hats. So to sum it up, for me, the ambassador head is on everything. And now to the why part, why am I doing this? Why am I using the same head on all of my surfaces? Because a lot of people use, for example, a, a coated ambassador on the snare, but then two ply heads on the toms, and then a power stroke or even a thicker head on the bass drum. 
Why am I using the same head on all of my surfaces? You know, to put it short, I'm kind of taking the Dave Weckl approach here. I like my drums to all sound and feel the same to me. Of course, a bass drum sounds different than a snare drum or a tom, but with the same head, you're still within the same sound family and most certainly within the same family of feel and response. Especially with the way I tune and dampen my drums, which is, as far as dampening is concerned, really almost not at all. So it makes sense to use the same kind of head and same kind of muffling and dampening principle on all of your surfaces in order to get them, you know, evenly. And I, I always experience that when I play on a, on a different kit that is not my own and it, it has a very, you know, a pre-muffled thick bass drum drum head and, and a lot of stuff in the bass drum. And, but then I use my snare, I wind up getting, you know, knee pain and, and, and general pain in my leg. Um, because of, you know, stomping like crazy the whole night to, to get the bass drum acoustically and, and also feel-wise to the level of, of my snare drum. So it just makes perfect sense to use the same striking surface on every instrument. But then again, I do muffle my bass drum a little bit with, you know, a small pillow inside it. If I'm not going for that, you know, either very open, very high bebop tuning on the small kick drum, or on a 20 inch for that, you know, uh, marching band, Keith Carlock kind of uh, sound, um, completely unmuffled. If I'm not going for that sound, if I want a normal, more tighter pop funk sound, I will muffle the bass drum a little bit for sure, but it's still not that much muffling that the actual ring on the power stroke will give you because that plastic ring on the power stroke drum head is pretty thick and it sticks on there pretty tight and it sticks on there directly, which really changes the feel of the head. It's not only the sound. The power stroke gives you a really nice, you know, very low end thick sound, but you know, it's, it's pretty stiff and rigid and, and pretty muffled. And then the ambassador, you can muffle it as much as you want. You can stick, you know, a ring on there by yourself and then you have a power stroke. But you can also, you know, not do that and you will always get like a more airy, more open sound. In my opinion, better playing feel and you also get, you know, more attack. You can hear it better. It's much clearer, you know, with those same uh, concepts and heads on the other drums. And you can play hand to foot combinations much more easily because you can hear it and it's articulate and it's, it feels great. If you were using thicker heads and more muffling on your toms, a power stroke or, or some other bass drum head might be perfect for you. So I'm not saying that I don't like muffling or that I don't like certain drum heads, but it just really, really makes great sense to me to have, you know, the same thing going on with all of my drums, you, you know, to get them even, to get them feel the same, and to get the same sound out of all of my drums. But again, feel is uh, as, you know, personal as sound. So, I mean, do your own thing. This is just my philosophy, my two cents, because the community has already been asking me about that. But, you know, take your time and experiment with different heads, different combinations, different mufflings and find out what you like. That's it for this week, guys. Again, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to sound, uh, I can talk for hours, but we'll wrap it up now. Go to my website, simonspringer.online for additional information and additional exclusive lessons. Everything you might need is up there or will be shortly. I'll hit you up next Monday with a completely new video. Until then, please make sure to subscribe to my channel right here. If you're interested in learning hand technique with me, I have a complete course on hand technique right here on YouTube. 17 episodes and it's completely free. Check out other clips as well and also go to my website simonspringer.online. Let me know if you like this video and please share your opinions in the comment section. And I'll see you all next Monday.